you know, sometimes we forget to turn on the, the mic, turn off the mic, uh, so you hear some things that you should try down here. And I just forgot to turn on the record button, so we're now recording. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we have a, uh, what is that, a game day champion, Matt? Yeah, Sakan uh, Unbroken. Uh, sa- oh, personalized by the uh, by Alexi, XXC Bricklet. Or oh, however you pronounce his name. It's it's French. I don't know how to pronounce French words. It's probably like Bricklaw. Bricklaw. Oh, brick, Bricklaw. Bricklaw. Bricklaw, you know. It's like when you ask your con- your contractor what your wall is made out of. Uh, Bricklaw. Bricklaw, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. And, uh, okay, we had the names the, wrong, the other way around. So let me go edit that right now. Melvin versus... Carry, carry. So I'm gonna. So there we go. We have seen oh, yeah. the Doomsday deck. Yeah. So the Doomsday pilot is on your left. Yeah. Uh. So and this will, this promises to be a you know <laughs> another confusing game for us. Uh. But hopefully you know if if anything we can get the Doomsday piles right, which we did. We managed to do. Yep. The even last game. Got there. Yeah. So that was that was pretty good. I mean, I think he could have optimized it a little by uh you know if he was worried about like. Pyroblast, he could have got, might have gotten something else like, uh, you know, something that was non-blue. I think if you had saved that thought sees, yeah, yeah, it would have been a lot smoother lot closing smoother. out the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he worry would pull out as much. the only thing he was worried about. Yeah, and had yeah. To Turns out his opponent drew a d- a, a, a dud. Yeah, you know? a deck. A deck, a deck, a dud deck. A deck um, faden. A deck faden. Uh, but yeah, I th- yeah. So uh, uh, I see we're very low tech here. There's no actual like. No. No people. Do hit, I know what? Sorry. Us. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you know what deck carries? Uh, he's playing a storm deck. So storm. He's playing, uh, the the kind of bogeyman, the other bogeyman of the format, which is this hyper fast, uh, you know, dark ritual based combo deck. And the idea here is that they take advantage of dark petition, you know, fresh off a, a pro tour top eight. Yep. Uh, dark petition is the marquee card in this deck because it basically lets you tutor your deck for um, the tutor future. for you know. Uh, most whichever cards, whichever, cards, yeah. whichever part you're it's missing yeah. it really is demonic tutor because it's you know five mana but you get three back um, kind of like CPF you know <laughs> more more immediate <laughs> than CPF uh, or for, C- for those of you who are listening who aren't Singaporean uh, you know, CPF is a kind of forced retirement plan for yep. a lot of uh, Singaporeans it carry leads off with library uh, which you know in any kind of blue based mirror is a super important card an amazing card, but a carry also you know evens that out by having a handful of mana and a lot, not yeah. a lot going on. Is right it now. is it bad? Is it terrible for a it's storm not terrible, to especially to flood? In a, uh, it's it's good and it's bad. Like it means that especially with brainstorm, uh, yeah, you can just pick whatever yeah. relevant stuff he wants to. But cast. in the absence of a brainstorm, it does mean that for example, you draw any storm spell, your hand is pretty life, mm-hmm. you know, and you will be able to amass more resources because you have a library, so. So uh, they being very friendly and playing their can, the hands open, the cans open as well, um, and, and you know, you know, Kerry briefly explaining in Chinese that uh, there's no real point for Melvin to write down his hand because he's gonna he might cast a brainstorm at some point, and so he's just gonna be nice about it and play with his hand open yeah. to save him, uh, save you know Melvin Kay. some time. Melvin hopefully has a land here. Uh, well, and you can see <coughs> the a doomsday, right? Yeah, he has a doomsday. Uh, and you can see the allure of this, uh, this, this deck uh, mm-hmm. playing against uh, another combo deck. It has so many powerful cards, right? Like Thoughtseize to pick apart Carry's hand. Can you imagine if he had a Thoughtseize now? He just takes that brainstorm yep. and Carry can draw cards yeah, with it. Uh, but no, what what is this? Why he did he ditch the Trigon present? So uh, I think what happened was Melvin kept a No Lander with a Gytaxian oh. Pro and just... You know, he whiffed on the draw. He whiffed on the draw, and now he's playing Mental Mist on his opponent's Sky Texan Pro, uh, which is not a battle you want to get into with a Library of Alexandra, because the that library draws you so much. Yeah, yeah. So what you can do with Library is to so you know you break the asymmetry, you break the symmetry, sorry, uh, of Magic where you draw one card a turn. Yep. So you're, you're drawing effectively two cards a turn, so you can lay a land and trade something with your opponent's card, which if he continues to lay lands means that you know he. He eventually loses. Oh, well, looks like Melvin. <laughs> Melvin did find the, the land, land, which is yes. great. It produces blue mana, which is even better because yeah. he has a Fluster Storm in his hand, which is going to be very good against Carry. But what it doesn't solve is the Library Alexandra. And you know, decks like Melvin's don't at all typically play uh, land destruction. Yeah. yeah, 
So he's in a bit of a, a spot. Yeah. So he's pondering about tutor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice sign, beta demonic tutor. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I see a white bullet card, which probably means it's a it's yeah it's a mox with the mox we knew from the opening hand. So carry going with the demonic tutor, it seems, which now gives Melvin an opportunity to fluster storm. I believe. And that I think take carry of will take carry of uh having enough cards to library next turn. Yeah. So that could be a very good Fluster Storm. It's basically Fluster Storm draw a card or your opponent discards a card. Yeah. Um so yeah, if if any any point. But oh, nope, obviously not. Yeah. Because I I'm wrong all the time. I'm horrible at this game. You know, I don't even know what my opponent's doing. <laughs> uh or maybe we maybe we just didn't see we saw the wrong card. Maybe it's not not Fluster Storm. Perhaps. Yeah, I think it's we have to be a little bit more quiet about what we say is in the hands. Because, uh, you know, as the store gets a bit quieter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, for you guys who are curious, the, the players are seated about <laughs> seven <laughs> meters away yeah, seven from meters away. where we are commenting from. Yeah, so, you know, so I could probably say something like... You probably uh, shouldn't uh, shout out. Yeah, <laughs> or, you know, you, should, you know, I, yeah. if, like, Kerry scratches his crotch and I say something mm. about it, you'll probably know. So... Not that he scratches his crotch often. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's true. You're right. Uh, ponder, most likely looking for a land. Yep, finds the mm -hmm. blue delta. This is the best kind of ponder because you can then choose exactly what you want to draw yep. by fetching at an opportune moment. So carry tutored and passed. Uh, I think he tutored for duress. So he's going to go mm. back up to eight cards, seven cards, and then draw his eighth. So good. So good. It's like playing a completely different game, you know. It's like playing yeah, that that Marvel yeah. Marvel versus system, and your opponent's playing Magic. You know, you get to draw two cards a turn. You <laughs> <laughs> your mana smooth. You don't have to worry about anything at all. Hearthstone versus Magic. You hit yeah, seven Hearthstone mana versus on Magic. Turns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that's kind of the effect. It's yeah. like playing Hearthstone because yeah. you're guaranteed, almost guaranteed to make a land drop every turn, because yeah. you're just drawing so many cards, so many more cards than your opponent. So one of the the usual ways you get around that is just to force your opponent to interact with you. <coughs> this is this is ill advised. He is trying. He's gonna force a duress. Oh, so maybe the card that we thought was plus a storm was instead Hercules Recall, oh. which is absolutely nothing in this matchup. But I think this is problematic because Hercules Recall is the one that returns the uh, artifacts or artifacts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think this is problematic because like. You know, Melvin's not getting any ground. He's losing extra cards by yep. casting. He's getting uh, attrition force down. Out. Yeah, he's getting attrition down the game. And more importantly, he's not playing his discard spells uh, in, a, in a useful manner. If he had cast his uh, Thought Seize last turn, mm -hmm. he would knock his opponent off uh, library, library num the number of cards for library. Yep. He would have, you know, you know, eliminated a threat possibly and known that, you know, he... He would stop the chain reaction. Yeah, he yeah. probably had taken that duress, to be yep. honest. So he wouldn't be in this position where he needs to force, uh, and you know, carry as defense grid, which is defense gonna stop grid. all interaction. Oh. So Melvin seems very it's happy about that yeah. because I think he's thinking that oh, this is my, this is my sign to go off, and he does have a fluster storm. What is going on? I have no idea. I have no idea. Like, what does fluster storm do? That's Fluster like so important in this matchup. Fluster storm says counter target instant or sorcery spell unless your opponent pays one. It sounds like a horrible magic card, but it has storm. So it means that for every spell that's been played do before the system, do it again. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, you know, is amazing against uh, in a lot of situations. Uh, here we have the Thought Seas. Here the Thought Seas. Cards that we, we already knew about, and he gets to knock out the Yorkmoor's. No, <laughs> it's yeah, the Yorkmoor's bargain is quite a bit more powerful than Shriekmoor, despite only costing one mana more. Uh, it says skip your draw phase, pay one life, draw a card. Oh. Yeah, so I think he takes that. Uh, which you know, leaves still still leaves Carrie with the option to cast Brainstorm, but uh, Carrie is, you know, from having a definitely explosive turn. Next turn, he's now down to you know he's at he's at the mercy of the top you know four cards of his deck, and immediately draws Dark Petition because that's how Magic is played. You, draw what you, you just need. draw exactly what you need. Back to our conversation about you know 
how many cards would you compromise if you're starting hand the tutor for something every turn? It depends on the kind of deck. Okay. It depends on the deck, yeah. But yeah, but like so certain decks in general. He's playing the he's playing the brainstorm. This is interesting. Because he knew he needs to win even more. Was it a necropotence? Yeah, necropotence. You know, it's a uh, it is the the less powerful version of your most bargain. But yeah. your most bargain was supposed to be a a fixed necro where it wasn't so cheap, so you couldn't play it off one ritual. Uh, but as a result, you know, that card is a card that inspires people to do crazy things. Mm-hmm. And I can't believe this. Kerry, he didn't Kerry has both the dark petitions at the front of his hand. That's insane. Is he thinking about? <laughs> so I I don't see the point of necro here because you have a, you have a. You already have a big lead ahead. Yeah, and your opponent can't interact with you because you have a defense grid in place. So you're not worried about counter magic. You just go for a deterministic, you know, yeah, hand. Just Try to sh- quickly yeah. close the game out. Yeah, I mean that's what the, co- the whole point of a combo deck is to close the game out. You know, before your opponent gets to do anything. And this is interesting. Is there something that he's tiptoeing around? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know what the necro is there for. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> What's his opponent gonna do? Like pitch Simon Spirit Guy and cast Force of Will? This is whole hand. <laughs> you know? It literally is a whole hand. <laughs> Simon Spirit Guy, blue card, and Force of Will. So, I I think it's just. Overthinking. You know. He's overthinking things. You know, he doesn't need to crack the fetch. He doesn't need to lay the land, so I can see putting a land back. But why would you want to have one dark position? Uh, w- on only one dark position when you have two. Yeah. yeah. Makes it makes your odds of being able to go off a lot easier because you can just get mana with the first dark position, Tudor for Lotus. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's a realistic way for Melvin to win this game. So I'm gonna get some water in my system while we wait. Uh, you're going to see Carry Cast Dark Petition. You know, a strange addition to this deck from not something that people expected out of Magic Origins. Origins. It took a while for... It, it, it took a while for everybody to warm up to Dark Petition. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely think it's something that everyone kind of immediately thought about and then forgot about. Forgot yeah, about. Well, they, they all thought about it in terms of legacy and it vintage. But they didn't really think about its standard appeal, which, you know, yeah, it's as starting, it turns out... starting to crawl in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seasons passed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Carrie is resolving a dark petition now with three black mana. So this petition I think should go for Lotus. Then you if he had a second petition, it goes for Lotus, then you petition again and get your most will. So your most will, you know, for you, play you, you can play uh cards cards graveyard. Graveyard as though they were in your hand. Uh if a card will be put into the graveyard this turn is instead removed from the game. Yep. Because, uh, you know, it would be... OP. OP. Uh, there was a time we could play four of them in standard. And four Dark Rituals. Yikes. Yeah, so, you know. But this was before, like, cards like Treasure Cruise and Dictory Time. So, that was that, that yeah. year's form of, like, you know, just grinding someone out by having incremental card advantage. And so, you played stuff like Ravenous Rats and you know, stupid... Yeah, it's just... <laughs> yeah, it's stuff that, you know, you chump block with the rat and put it in the graveyard. Do it and, again. And, you know, recast it again. again. Yeah. You know. The only thing that people didn't do was to re just to cast uh, two your almost villains two your almost on the same turn. You know, okay. You had to be really bad to do that. But you know, he's gonna ritual. And he he had he had a deterministic kill and he's he's going for he's going for a time twister. What is the time twister? Time twister says Oh, he's going for the necro. <laughs> so he kept the ne- he kept the necro so you could play it. You have to pay health life for Necro, right? Oh. Yeah, but he's casting the Necro and now he's casting Ancestral and uh, casting Time Twister. That is... Uh, this is... Either he's trolling his opponent or he is playing something that is around something that is non-existent given the fact his opponent only has two mana. Is this the Toreda play of the day? <laughs> um, yeah, he he's casting... Uh, he's casting Time Twister. Uh, so, you know, I see it as there's a question you have to answer. Do you want to win for sure, or do you want to maybe win? And this is definitely a maybe win kind maybe. of scenario now. Uh, there could have been a win for sure. So that seems Im- infinitely inferior to me. But you know, maybe 
Is it Maybe possible that he good. didn't see the line of way or he had a Pet, I, pet pet way of victory, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe he's trying to make the the world's largest tendrils kill. We could have to call the guys on Guinness because we're going for broke here. Uh, so I think he's. Or we can call people to bring us Guinness. Oh, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> we we are situated in a pub district, so yeah, that is very much a possibility. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd have to ask him after this game. I really want to know why he didn't just kill him deterministically. Uh, his hand looks to be so in this position you have uh, what you advantage know, do you have right now after resetting uh, the hand I can't imagine you have any tactical advantage you have a resource advantage you have you know, seven yeah, cards yeah. Uh, yeah, cards in play cards in play but I don't think carry can win from this position because th- one of the ways to um, to bottleneck a deck that or any any player who has a lot of cards is to cramp his mana, right? Yep. And I think what the carry has done or carry's drawn is a hand that is is full of interaction but has no real way to and yeah, he's forced to pass a turn and just necro. And um Necro I think is gonna help him win, but he has no way of interacting with Melvin on his turn. So Melvin can kill him on mm-hmm. Melvin's turn, which Melvin I can f- go off now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has he has the I think he has He's the kill because he has Doomsday. Yeah, and he had Doomsday in hand. Yeah, earlier. so it will be amazing oh. if Kerry loses from a, from that position. But and you know that Twister just got Melvin out of the hole. Yeah. You know, Melvin's hand was wasn't great. Uh, and he he took a gamble and he was falling behind on Time Twister on on uh, to the library. Yep. But you know Time Twister just resets mm. all of that. Give him a chance. Yeah. So Kerry is carefully creating his hand. Um, Trying to get into a, into a position to win next turn, and you can see, Carrie's hand is definitely going to win dark next turn. Uh, outside of some interaction on Melvin's part, but I believe Melvin is going to kill him. He's going to demonstrate his ability, the power, to, you know, play he draws play another, the deck that he built. He draws another doom. Is that a brainstorm at the end of his hand? If that's a brainstorm, that he can win. Mm. That's a mock sapphire, so it's, it's he's definitely got enough mana. Uh, so this is where he goes. So this is a land, I assume. The Urbog and oh, the, the Revenge of the Urbog. Urbog. <laughs> or if you're confused, it's Urbog. What? <laughs> it's a way of communicating confusion. Yeah. So Melvin's casting Doomsday. The you know the the signature. Spell choose of this your thing. choose your own adventure. Yeah, choose five your five pages well, left. Yeah. Does Melvin not have a draw spell? Is that it? Gosh. Because because with 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 Brainstorm you have to put two cards back. So you're not actually going that much further into your deck. But I think that's what the gush the gush is there for. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. This I think it's quite fun. I can imagine to like it's fun, like in the way that solving a puzzle. Yeah, is you fun. have to solve yeah. the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you only have you know these resources and stuff like that. Yeah. I think there's almost always a an objectively right set of five cards to pick. Um, so I think that's the that, that's what draws people to this deck. It's like you can debate the the situation and okay. and uh, improve as a player because you know we're always trying to improve. Yeah. Um, but what about you? What kind of vintage decks do you like to play? Uh I actually like to play the deck that Carrie's playing. I I storm. Uh, yeah, I you know played a lot and built a lot of my 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 rating <laughs> at some point playing <laughs> that deck um but this was when you could play like four lion's eye diamonds and it mm-hmm. was it was absolutely insane it was the it was the best deck by far in the format <laughs> you were you were you were short changing yourself by not playing the deck that's how that's how strongly i felt um but today i i like playing the delver deck the one that mark has built mm-hmm. you know i i think um i like attacking with one mana three two flying creatures it's also awesome. something that you can you that's can probably awesome. I like yeah yeah i'm trying to Brew up a standard each Delver kind of thing. Yeah. But with the new four mana Delver. Is that is that what you're doing? No? No, I'm trying to sneak in the The Skulk guy. Two mana three two fly instead. The oh. Yeah, Falcon Rough. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. Oh, so I guess the only common thing is that they're three two flyers. Yeah, it's three two flyers. Yeah, there's nothing blue in the deck. Uh, is it? I'm toying with the idea of throwing blue in. It's okay. currently red black. What, what do you play? What What will blue get you? Jace. Ways to protect. Oh, it okay, okay. It's like counter spells and stuff. Yeah. Because yeah, you can madness the counter spells. Yeah. Oh. Because there's a new counter. So but isn't that like a? It's it's, it's four mana. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because they learned the lesson from circular logic. <laughs> So logi- was logic one was one mana. OP. Yeah. It was insane. It's so P. So Melvin's still thinking about his, his hand. It looks like it contains restricted cards. Uh, so Lotus, I'm guessing Lotus, Ancestral. Uh, I, th- I think Lotus and Ancestral is always in the... In oh, is the Among the five? Mix, yeah. Unless he has it in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. So, you know, the other person who's famous for playing this deck is Steven Mendendian. Uh So some of you might know him from VSL Success and mm-hmm. VSL... Um, being part of the VSL the Vintage Super League uh, which if you don't already watch it you should check out whenever it's on uh, it's on twitch.tv slash magic yeah. Uh, and yeah he is notoriously ponderous ponderous yeah he puts the the, the ponder in ponder uh, well he puts the P and he thinks for about half a minute and he puts the uh, o, o and you know you know how that goes uh, so yeah he, he, he in fact he is so ponderous he decided that he will write a book about how to play Gush. Yeah, that is the guy he is. So he has the brainstorm. And I think he's just going to kill. He's just going to draw into Gush. gush and then he's going to be able to Gush. Oh. oh. He's going to be able to cast Ancestral into, you know, Lotus, Lotus, Lab Maniac. Um, probe? Oh, so he's, he's got the probe first and he's going to use the Gush to, to as the kill. So here's Lotus. Uh, laboratory maniac and cast another probe and yep, Carrie wi- loses. Carrie loses from what was a deterministic win. I I'm I had I was <laughs> I was sure he was gonna win. Uh, he was so far ahead. Yeah, he was. The library was insane. The library was insane. You know, and it goes to show that you know, um, you can't just play Magic as a game of trying to get more cards. You know. D- drawing, it drawing more cards doesn't, doesn't automatically is it easy to get lost in the yeah I think value 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 yeah it is easy you know it's it's, it's this is this is, we're talking about life now Ruben we're talking about life <laughs> it's it's easy to get lost in life and in magic you know just thinking Card about advantage. value all the time you know oh yeah I can save a couple of bucks here and there you know and you lose sight of what's really important winning the game and life uh, so yeah uh, what comes in from the board Probably more discard on Melvin's part. Pr- maybe some graveyard hate to kind of uh, slow down dark petition. Mm-hmm. Hang on one second. I'm both the judge and the commentator. <laughs> yes, Melvin. Yeah. Come here. Okay, I'm back. I had to answer a question about the Exit Jailer. So those of you who don't know, the Exit Jailer is a card that says uh, cards in graveyards have no abilities. Um, so presumably, Melvin thinks that he can maybe interact with Dark Petition by having the Exit Jailers. Uh, the joke's on him because, he, yeah, you know, Dark Petition is on the stack and all that Dark Petition needs to fulfill its spell mastery requirements uh, to have two other instances of sorceries in the graveyard. But I think it might be good against any kind of like Yorkmoor's will based shenanigans. Um, I really wouldn't advise on having Yixin Jailer in your deck unless you're, tr- you're planning on just beating your opponent down, just sideboarding in Yixin Jailers and, 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 uh, <laughs> and Trigons and just beating him down. Um, yeah, I'd probably bring in Nihil Spellbomb, which I see in his sideboard. Uh, over Yuxa Jailer. But you know, there are times when people put, and you might agree with this, Ruben, uh, there are times when people put cards in their sideboard and they just want to play with them. You know, they just want to, like, oh my god, I have this sideboard card. I really want to try it out. I really want to play with it. 
you know, at least yeah. people do some crazy things. Yep, I've seen cra- some crazy sideboards. But you, d- you don't see as much transformational sideboards these days. You know, in the past, you used to play control decks and there's like 15 creatures in your sideboard. And then your opponent will side out all his removal and you just bring in your your guys and just beat him down. Yeah. Wasn't that quite wasn't that quite recent actually during uh, oh yeah, the, Theros? The, the, the ascendancy uh, deck. Fleece main line as well. Oh yeah. Where, yeah, the, yeah, where yeah. the control decks would sneak it in. Sneak it in and then and just then you know like just beat down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, maybe that's Melvin's plan. Maybe he's just yeah. gonna br- take out all the combo parts, bring in like, you know, more disruption, you could jail us and and try compressors and just beat carry to death with them. <laughs> yeah, you know, that could happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can imagine after th- two rounds of having to play this deck and figuring out what five cards to get, you're just sick of it. You're just like, yep. screw this. I'm just going <laughs> to jam creatures and, <laughs> and counter spells and, and discard spells. But are there decks in Vintage that goes to a different plan uh, after sideboarding? Mm. So the one that... um. It's the most prominent, I think, with that kind of plan is the dredge deck. Okay. So the dredge deck, um, you know, people bring in stuff to interact with the graveyard because the dredge deck is trying to break the symmetry of the game by having your graveyard be your hand. Yeah, be your resource, right? yeah. So, so people yeah, bring in stuff, some really nasty stuff, like Rest in Peace, uh, you know, Leyland of the Void, and Gra- all that kind of... Graph Diggers. Graph Diggers yeah. cages and stuff like that. It's crazy. Uh, so what they do is they bring in Dark Depths, Despian Stage, and uh, like Urbongs and stuff like that, right? And so <laughs> they just make a twenty twenty. You know, uh, you know how that combo works, right? You copy a legendary land. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Tesmin Stage becomes a copy of Dark Depths. Uh, but because uh, it's already in play, it doesn't come to play with any counters. And Dark Depths is a clause that says when it has no counters on it, you can rem- destroy it or put it in the graveyard and put Spawn Myra Lynch, you know. Yep. Who, you know, we all suspect is Emrakul. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Yeah, so uh, Carrie on his phone. Hopefully not consulting his friends watching the stream as to what his opponent's strategy is. That would Probably be Probably not. Yeah. I I mean, I don't know what it's like playing magic in the in in this in this era of like iPhones and stuff like that where you can, you know, basically scout the whole tournament and have like a group chat where you tell everyone what yeah, everyone you, else is you, playing. You could, you could. It's insane. I mean in the past, I mean, I remember playing at Nationals where uh, I had a friend go around with like a like a spreadsheet of all the players and uh-huh. he would just check off who was uh. playing what, you know. Uh, and so we would, they, we, at the end of like round six, we knew who was playing, who okay. everyone, what everyone else was playing. Well, what I saw during a PPTQ was Nygag. I <laughs> saw so a guy <laughs> while his opponent was shuffling and presenting like his sideboard. He was on Nygag. <laughs> That's so, awesome. That was a Sorry? laugh. So Mark's coming here for some vintage help after he's lost his game, presumably. Uh, I can't beat prison, though. He can't beat prison. You know what you do to beat prison? Stay in school, kids. <laughs> Stay in school. Don't do drugs. You know, <laughs> don't pee in any buckets. Toe the line. Toe the line, you know. Don't do anything crazy. Uh, but yeah, I think beating prison is all about laying basic lands. So that's my that's my, my, my two cents worth. Laying lands like, in general, you know, it doesn't have to, they don't have to be basic. Just so long as you keep laying lands and playing, finding ways to interact. In game one, you have very few ways to interact with artifacts, which is the the whole beauty of the the mud deck or the brown yep. deck, as we've been calling it. Brown is that deck. you <laughs> the brown deck? Um, yeah. But uh, s- once post board, you have a lot more ways to interact. So game one, usually you're trying to clock your opponent quickly before he gets you know plays the Smoke brown cards that you know yeah. yeah. And in game two, you're just trying to trade resources with him. So you have cards that trade one for one with his artifacts. And, you know, you have guys that thrive on these cards, like, uh, you know, Young Pyromancer. Young Pyromancer makes one ones as well. Do the brown decks play any more uh, recent artifacts? I think the most recent addition was Hanger Back Walker. The, it snuck in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you can uh, sacrifice artifacts through Outbound Ravager mm-hmm. and then put counters on yeah. Hanger Back Walker. Or you can do it the other way around. You can sacrifice Hanger Back Walker to Arkbomb Ravager. Yeah, the top tiers. Get a bunch of tokens. And they fly, so you can, you know, yeah. pile all your artifacts onto Arkbomb Ravager, and then they all hop onto the one very deadly top tier and kill your opponent. Boom. Boom. Dead. Boom. You, ca- you can't see Ruben, but he's doing like a, a boom sign. like a Yeah. Really aggressively. A very aggressive it. boom sign. Boom sign. Mixed between wrist low and some kind of, uh, you know, terrorism. No leopard prince here. Yeah. No leopard prince here, yeah, yeah. Only leopards. Sky leopards. If there was a dragon print. I yeah, I that's true. You, you wear dragon print. Dragon print. Yeah, I think this is the wrong Cantonese KTV bar. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> while we were talking all this crap, uh, Kerry led off with Delta Jet into Cabal Therapy. Cabal Therapy is scary when you're playing it blind, you know. It's um, much like, you know, dating. You'd like to know what your opponent's hand <laughs> or face <laughs> looks like. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I don't. I can't. Well, I, we I can't catch what he named. But I, I think, think he might have, must have named Doomsday, right? Because that's what he's afraid of. And Marvin doesn't have any Doomsdays. I don't think he's any Doomsdays left in his deck. I think he is purely on the. the I'm gonna fan, cast right? Yixit yeah. Jailers <laughs> and repeatedly molest you um, gently, uh, uh, gently <laughs> with uh, you know <laughs> boys to men playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to stream Boys to Men music after this. <laughs> sure. We, should, we could end the stream with yeah, well. Boys, Boys to Men marathon. <laughs> All like, you know, 20 of their songs. <laughs> and the cards moving. <laughs> <laughs> gently <laughs> against gently. each other. Uh, so, Melvin's going to fire back with Duress and he has, doesn't have to, like, pe- like dating on Tinder, you know, he can actually see what his opponent's hand looks like before choosing uh so this is this is the world we live in, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you can actually decide. You um, could still get fake packs, right? Yeah, you could. You could. You know, it, all these angles that people work when yeah. they they take Tinder pictures, or you know, they take pictures of this their sister. It's not them. Their cousin. Or their good friend. Their good friend. Uh, I think Duress takes Wheel of Fortune because it's the only gas that's going on in Carrie's hand, even though he has, um, almost will. And uh, yeah, Ven- I. Does he get Vanna White as well? Does he get Vanna White <laughs> along with... Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, Pat. Does, does he get Vanna? Uh, maybe. How how backwards is that show that they've had a guy be the host and the girl be the, you know, the showpiece? I grew up watching that. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Every day every at 6.30 <laughs> or something. <laughs> du- 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 uh. So we have your Ritual. He's going to presumably play the other Cabal Ritual get to four mana cast Yorkmoor's Will uh, this is a mini Yorkmoor's Will this is Yorkmoor's Will just to play a land and cast Wheel of Fortune so that he there can there are not many times in Magic where can le- reset. getting a land to play and drawing seven cards is yeah. considered mini but this is one of them uh, yeah so it's recounting the yeah, he's mana he's counting yeah yep oh uh, you know he's building up to he's gonna have four mana he's also yeah. keeping track of yeah the number of times he and the beauty of this is because he mulligan he has no cards in his hand to discard the wheel of fortune nothing gets removed from the game by by uh you know um your most will yeah, I think Kerry's in a great spot you know Kerry is going to be able to draw seven uh to refill his hand to get out of this hole that he is in as well as play that extra cabal therapy out of his graveyard mm-hmm so he can shri- he can both advance his plan or stop Melvin from building anything uh, moving forward. And how carry how early can a uh, storm deck go off? I think it goes so early as turn one. I think we had a turn one kill last week. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. I think against Mark, uh, you know, six card hand. Um, yeah, and Kerry bought it in his own mind break trap. So this is going to be a, a big surprise for Melvin when surprise, he- mother. <laughs> mother what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, Carrie doesn't have as explosive in hand, especially since any cards that go into the graveyard from this point are removed from the game, and, s- and as a result, he isn't able to trigger his spell mastery. He yeah. isn't able to have spell mastery for for this turn. For this turn, I'm surprised Carrie's going in this line. I thought he would just lay the library and pass, but I think he played the mock, so he's kind of down this road. Uh, we might need a judge there, very in a in a. C- in a Gen few Z moments to tell to remind, to remind him that uh, he doesn't have spell mastery on his yeah well, I'm gonna go get them done and he has been gently reminded yeah sure Someone cast balance tonight. This is that's awesome. That's the aim for today. Zero cards in play. What do you do? Do you suspend a whole bunch of things? That's amazing. Someone cast balance. You know, it's been a while since that card was good. 
So Carrie is quickly realizing that he doesn't because he doesn't have a spell mastery because he almost feels active. He might have wanted to slow play this turn a bit. Um, you know, it's it's rough. I think you know he's asking for a take back, um, but this is a bit of a concern. And yeah, this is. I mean, this is a bit of a problem. Um, he, he can't make the best out of bad scenario by maybe getting a discard spell and you know tagging his opponent's hand and hoping to refill uh, or find more action next turn but he's gonna get his favorite card the card that lost him the first game <laughs> and get uh <laughs> melvin is showing us the f6 uh f6 paper you know popularized by one brian kibler at gp san diego when his opponent was playing eggs uh you know you know the story ruben uh, i actually was there for this gp so it's a Combo kill, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so Eggs is like a non-deterministic combo kill. He it forced him to slowly go through the... No, he didn't. Actually, he uh, he was quite the opposite. He His opponent was going off and Brian Kibler decided, you know, because he's Brian Kibler, he plays only green-white decks. Mm -hmm. um, he had no way of inter interacting. So he decided that he would get up and go for a, a toilet break, probably a coffee, maybe a smoke. He doesn't look like a guy that smokes, so maybe just coffee. Okay. Um, and so he was in the feature match area and he told a judge to watch his opponent and then he just wrote F6 on a giant piece of paper <laughs> and he left, <laughs> and it, left it on the, the table room. and he just walked off um, yeah which you know <laughs> <laughs> is how I feel sometimes about uh, these matchups so you know he still has the, the he still has the doomsday in his deck and I think he's gonna win from here wow no if, oh no 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 no. Carry has mind break trap oh. mind break trap is if your opponent you know has played yeah so if if Melvin doesn't pick the right series of cards uh, Carrie is gonna be able to employ him out. You know, you could mind break the, uh, you can mind break the laboratory maniac and yep. let him die to his own library death. You could mind break the draw spell and then you know find a way to make him draw seven, for example, like time twister. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think so. These are some really sick things that could happen as a result of this. But, oh, I, but see he, yeah. I see him pick up a duress, which is very He's intelligent. Uh, very smart of um, of Melvin, but I think, I think, um, if Carrie wasn't as you know, if Carrie was judicious about it, he could check exactly what cards have been exiled to uh, Doomsday and f surmise or deduce what's in yeah. in his hand, and then know exactly when to play that mind break trap. But if he goes off, if uh, if he starts off with the duress. Doesn't it? Ah, he needs to draw the duress first. Ah, okay. So yeah. So we see him. Yeah, he's he's, he's slowing mana for Gush. Yeah. Unfortunately, the mind break trap is not on yet. Because um, he has, you know, he has to play yeah. another spell before it comes on. So, with that in mind, blue and black floating. This is Melvin moving into his doomsday pile. Well, at least we know there will be a conclusion really yeah, soon. That's true. That's true. We can all go for dinner. Yay. Now he resolves the and I think the jig is up if he plays this sequence is this correctly. Because he just plays the rest. And then he he wins mm. from here. Yep. Yep, he does. That is the game boys, because he's gonna grab the grab the the mind break trap. And so maybe Kerry runs the bluff here of mind breaking trap mind break trapping the duress. So that Melvin thinks he's got another mind break trap, and uh, but I don't think, you know, like, you know, any bluff you, you can't, you can't put your opponent in a situation where they they have to call your bluff yeah. to win. If not, they lose, because that that's just not tenable. So that's a draw. So he has this, and he has the kill, and, and boom. that's game. Cool. And All right. Melvin wins very well, very well piloted, very so good decisions were made. Today you know. is Doomsday Day. Today is Doomsday, yeah. Thursday is Doomsday. Tuesday is okay. Doomsday. So thanks for watching. Uh, if there are any other games, I don't think there are any other games. No, there are no other games. So thanks for watching and we'll upload all these to our YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. So please check us out there. Like us on Facebook. Yep, uh, visit the games. store. Come see us at GP New York, GP LA, GP Portland, GP Atlanta, GP Taipei, GP Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and you know just hang out yeah if you guys are curious at what other events uh, check out the Facebook page we yeah. run in the store we have standard, standard SG game yeah. nights on Tuesdays, Tuesdays and modern 
On Wednesday. More than Wednesday. And as you just and saw, vintage on Thursdays. On Thursdays, which is going to be a fixture. And, and usual uh, FNM drafts and standard yeah. on Fridays. So, mm-hmm. and then of course, we will have weekend events. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, all the premiere events and everything else. Yeah. Why did I play Doomsday? <laughs> so he's asking the, he's asking the, uh, the, the chat. Yep, Maybe so you guys can supply him an answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, but thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks I'm, everyone. I'm Ben. See and you, ben. Ruben. And we'll uh, see you guys see soon. You soon. Maybe this weekend for the uh, game, game day. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover that we'll, as well. we'll be covering game day as well. Sounds so good. Sounds good. See cool. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And good night.